Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. Blue Devils go on the road, 77-67 win over Virginia Tech. It is their first quad one road win of the season. They had two other road wins. They were not quad one wins. Jeremy Roach off the bench, 16 points, four assists. Played 29 minutes, looked like he was healthy again. Mac, how, how big is it? to be able to go on the road and pick up a road win like this in a place like Blacksburg, a place that you have coached and you know how difficult that can be. I mean, it's huge. You know, Duke's had their struggles there. You know, this isn't, uh, you know, a place that they just sort of check off the box and say, we're going to roll in and into uh, Blacksburg and get a win. You know, what impressed me about Duke was just thought all of their guards, uh, Caleb Foster, maybe not quite uh, the level of the other guards, but I, I think all their guards, played well. When, the, when their guards play well, I don't mean one of them. I, I don't mean Jeremy Roach has a good game. I mean, Proctor plays well. Jared McCain plays well. I think Jared McCain can play even better. Uh, when those guys, and he was ACC Rookie of the Week this past week, mm -hmm. when those guards are clicking, and Filipowski is such a tough matchup. You know, Virginia Tech changed ball screen coverage about three or four times during the game. Mike Young doesn't generally do that, but when they're slipping – Filipowski into the mid post or at the foul line um, on hard coverages. And he's such a good passer. He's a, he's a great finisher. Um, he shoots nine shots, 14 points, eight rebounds. That's a big, that's a, that's a really good win for Duke. Um, really good win. I think when their guards play well, they've got a shot to maybe jump in that race with Carolina this weekend. It's going to be huge, obviously. Yeah, Doug, that's the that's the big question, right? Like, uh, how good is Duke actually? They came into the season. It was them or Kansas as the preseason number one, and obviously have not quite lived up to that. How good are they, and how good can they actually be? Uh, I think they're good, um, and I think they can. I think they can make it to the Final Four, um, and I think that part of it is you have to get all your pieces back in order to absorb those roles. And I think it kind of organically is working itself out in terms of the roles. Right. Like they know who their go-to guy is. And then mm -hmm. Flip, as, as I, I think Mac pointed out, like he's actually really unselfish. He's not a pig. So you can, when he's double team or when he slips and catches the mid post, he sprays it to other places. And I think they're getting there defensively. You know, uh, Virginia Tech's a very different cover than say Carolina or some of these other teams. They run a million sets. They're all good. And they spread you out and they, you know, they flare you, they curl you, they do all kinds of different stuff. And you have to be super disciplined, not just in your coverages, but in talking to one another, which is the hardest part for college kids these days. They don't actually talk to each other. They text or snap each other, right? But you can't do it on the court. Um, so I thought there was a great amount of de defensive discipline, especially considering some of the younger players they're playing. And they did do a good job. Like Padula couldn't get a good look. He was 0 of 6 from 3. That's, that's how you have to be Virginia Tech. you got to limit their quality looks. And then you got to expose them athletically, defensively. They're not great, but they, they do help very well. Um, so I thought coaching-wise was excellent. I thought rotation-wise, you had eight. They all played within their roles. And I kind of think they're figuring themselves out. Are they a Final Four team right now? No. The tournament doesn't start today. It starts in March, end of March. So um, I think they're actually progressing quite nicely as, you know, the injuries have really helped them play uh, Foster and McCain probably more than they would have played that early in the season. And it's a lot like UConn, right? Like UConn probably benefits from Klingon being out as long as he was out. It gave them kind of a second sort of gear, a different sort of way to play. And I think the same things happened for Duke. So um, them and Carolina are very different. Carolina's older. Um, I don't think Carolina has nearly as many options to beat you off the bounce. Um, but they're, I think, a little bit more mature in how they space and spread it. But they don't have the bench of Duke. They don't have eight guys that can score. So let me so, ask you this, and, and Mac, I want you to weigh in on this too. So the whole thing about North Carolina becoming this like top three, top four, you know, number one seed kind of a deal has been that they've made this this growth on the defensive end of the floor. Right? They were a problem defensively. They they, were, they had a problem defensively the last two years. They are a problem defensively now at least according to the metrics thank you for watching the field of 68 if you've enjoyed what you've seen here hit that like button share this link with your friends or check out the description for some other places that you can consume field 68 content